John Buck. Uh, I'm here with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video, we're going to go through an example of using the Discrete Time Fourier Series Synthesis Equation. So that's the version where we have the a sub k's and we need to find uh, the signal in the time domain. So we're, we're synthesizing the time domain signal from the Fourier Series coefficients. And so we'll break that down and go through it uh, step by step and show you how we get to the time signal and particularly how important uh, Euler's identity is for, for finding this. Uh, so uh, let me uh, switch over to the whiteboard. Again, so our uh, topic uh, for today is, is the discrete time uh, Fourier series example. So just sort of giving you a, an example of how we take the, the coefficients and get to the time signal. Uh, so if you go to the next page, I already sort of laid some of this out. So in this example, we're going to look at a case where the period n is 4, and then the values of the Fourier series coefficients are 0 when k is equal to 0, 2 when k equals 1, 0 when k is uh, 2, and 2 again when k equals 3. And I've written them in color here because I'm going to uh, use the color to sort of show where things get plugged in because the first time through this, sometimes people find that a little hard to keep track of everything. And so I want to, uh, to I thought using the color would help people see where the substitutions all happen. Um, so in order to do this, we are, and our goal here is to find x of n, the time domain signal, who that is sort of, again, a sub k is like the recipe, so it's saying what signal do we make if, if we bake our cake with uh, two cups of k1 and, and two, cups of, uh, two cups of the first harmonic and two cups of the third harmonic, if you want to think in, in recipe language uh, for that. And so in order to do that, we need a couple things. This is our generic Fourier series synthesis sum. Right, which says the periodic signal x of n is going to be the sum as k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of a sub k as the weight times e to the j uh, k omega naught n. And again, just a reminder that we call this the uh, harmonic. Right, the each k times omega naught is the frequency of, of that harmonic. So we have omega naught, 2 omega naught, 3 omega naught, and actually 0 omega naught, uh, we'll see, is, is like the DC term. Uh, so the first thing to get going with this, we need to say, well, I need to know what omega naught is. We said the fundamental frequency, omega naught, is always 2 pi over the period. And right? if I have an integer period, so this will be 2 pi over 4, so that's pi over 2. And again, this is, we call this, just to reemphasize it, because this is an important idea, this is our fundamental frequency. And so we will eventually plug that in for omega naught, but uh, you know, sort of pro tip from years of practice, sometimes it's good to wait till you get a few steps in to put omega naught in, because otherwise you end up copying pi over 2 over and over again, and omega naught's maybe a little easier uh, to keep track of, and it also maybe helps us see some things along the way. Uh, and then we need to plug into the, the sum as well. For, I'm sorry, plug in for the period as well. So you get x of k goes from 0 to n minus 1 is now 3, because I knew up here the period was 4, a sub k, e to the j, uh, k times omega naught times n. So each of these is a time signal, right? They each depend on n, so I'm sort of adding these different signals together to get my result. Um, and then the next step I'm going to, uh, you know, is basically just write out this sum explicitly, term by term. When you get some practice, you'll be able to sort of jump through this ahead. But again, first time, I'm going to really break it down step by step for you. So again, a sigma like this is like a for loop. This is like saying for k equals 0 to 3, stepping through each term and adding them up. So I get one term is a sub 0, e to the j. And then see, k is now 0 times omega naught n. Uh, plus, I'm going to start using the colors. Well, when k equals 1... I'd have a sub 1 e to the j 1 times omega naught n plus the k equals 2 term. Right, when k is 2, I have a sub 2 e to the j, and I replace the k by 2 omega naught n plus uh, the k equals 3 term, which would be a sub 3 e to the j, and I replace the k by 3, omega naught n.
right? So this is this is unpacking this sum and, and saying this is the sum as k goes from zero to three is four terms. This is what they are. Now I can can come up here and, and take each term and plug in from up above and see what I get. So I'd say, well, when I've got zero here and then e to the zero and right the zero, this x zero on the exponent makes the whole exponent zero. E to the the zero is one plus for the k equals one term, I have a one. I go up here and I say a sub one is equal to two. And then I have e to the j omega naught n, right? Because one times omega naught. Then for the k equals three term, I go up here and say, well, how much? What's my recipe? How much a sub two do I need? None. Like, oh, that's easy to add. I, so I put zero uh, tablespoons or zero cups of, of the second harmonic into the signal. And then the last ingredient in my recipe, I say how much of the, K, of the third harmonic do I need to add in? Well, I add in two of the third harmonic. Okay, so that's the sum all broken out. And now I can look at it and say, well, these zero terms just go away. So I'm going to uh, slide up and, and, and simplify this sum a little bit. And now that, now that we've seen where things came from, I'm going to just keep everything in, in one, uh, one color. Well, I guess I can keep switching colors. It'll be prettier that way. So we have 2 times e to the j omega naught n plus the green term zeroes out, but the red term is still here. So I have 2 e to the j 3 omega naught n. Now, once I've gotten these things simplified a bit, now is usually when I go plugging in the pi over 2, because that will help me uh, with the algebra to get to a, a final answer. Um, so, so now I look at this and say, uh, I've got 2 times e to the j pi over 2n plus 2 times e to the j. Now, 3 times omega naught, well, omega naught is pi over 2, so I'll have... 3 pi by 2. But so waiting this long to plug in omega naughts until you've started to get through the first round of substitutions is a good thing because otherwise you're writing a lot of pi over 2s or, or something maybe even more complicated that it's easy to get lost in. So in theory, this is true, and I could put this into MATLAB and plot it or something. Um, but this is sort of a, a, a an answer that isn't really a solution. It doesn't really tell me anything about the signal. To do that, I'm going to want to simplify this a little bit more, and I need to use to do that. I need to use a a property of complex exponentials um, that helps me simplify them. And particularly, whenever I'm I'm uh, I'm working with complex exponentials, I'm always looking for ways to exploit Euler's identity. So now would be a good chance. Again, we talked about Euler's identity. Well, it's on the essential math handout sheet from the first day of class. Um, but uh, now would also be a good time to, to remind ourselves uh, what it looks like. Right? Euler's identity says e to the jx is the cosine of x plus an imaginary j times sine of x. So, so this complex exponential is sort of a single package holding a cosine and a sine. So if I, if I just want to get to a cosine, if I just have a cosine, I can write it as a half of e to the jx plus a half e to the minus jx. Right? When I do that, I can plug in and show, if I substitute in for each of these, the evenness of the cosine means it reinforces here and it's le it stays, whereas the oddness, the odd symmetry of the sine means um, the imaginary part, I have a, a sine x here and a minus sine x there, and they cancel out. When I subtract two, two exponentials with opposite signs, opposite signed exponents, I get, and, and I divide by 2j, I get a sine left. So that's just basically algebra from working with it. And if you're not familiar with those, you want to review it. But the key idea is whenever we're working with these Fourier things, what we want to do is be looking for ways to get to something that's either uh, a sum of two exponentials with equal but opposite exponents or a difference of them, and then w w when they have the same uh, amplitude in front. Because then I can collapse these complicated exponentials into a friendly old cosine or sine wave uh, and work from there. And then the other property we need to use regarding complex exponentials is that complex exponentials like this are actually periodic in omega. 
that if I add any multiple of 2 pi to omega, I get the same thing back again. So if my frequency and my fundamental frequency plus multiples of 2 pi, I end up right back where I started. And that actually uh, follows from Euler's identity and, and rules of, of uh, exponents, right? I know if I have a sum, let me, uh, let me distribute this through a little bit first. So if I write out the exponent after distributing, I have e to the j omega naught n plus j uh, 2 pi m n, where again, uh, m is some multiple integer. So this is saying an integer multiple of 2 pi. And n is always a, a, an integer because I have uh, integer time and discrete time. So if I write this as a sum in the exponent, I know from the laws of exponents, that's the same as taking the product like this, right? But if I uh, if I uh, write the product like this, I'm just going to simplify the second term with Euler's relation. So I get e to the j omega naught n times, and then this term I replace, I get a cosine of 2 pi mn. Oh, I'm going to need to make myself a little more space here. Plus j times the sine of 2 pi mn. But because m and m, m and n are both integers, this is some cosine times a multiple of 2 pi. And if I remember like how my cosine looks, right, if I start out here at 0, right, cosine of 0 is 1, and then every 2 pi to either side I also get a 1, right? 2 pi, 4 pi, minus 2 pi. So this term here is always going to be 1, and the sine at any multiple of 2 pi is equal to 0, right? Sine of 0 is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. This term is always 0. So this whole term here is just a big way to write 1, and so I'm left with what I set out to prove, which is that if I increase the frequency by any multiple of 2 pi for a complex exponential, and that's kind of a weird thing at first. I guess I, I should have said, yeah, it, it takes a little getting used to. We'll understand as the semester goes on, we'll see some reasons why that's true as we think more about complex numbers. But again, the main idea here is that if I add two pi, any multiple of 2 pi to the frequency or subtract, I, I can make m be a negative integer, I get back uh, the same signal. So I can always add or subtract multiples of 2 pi from that fundamental frequency. So th keeping those two things in mind of saying I can shift frequency by multiples of 2 pi and I'm always looking for ways to get to e to the jx and e to the minus jx together. Let's go back to that previous page and see how that helps us clean this up into a nice nicer signal. And this is what I'm looking at here. I'm saying, oh, you know, I can say that e to the j 3 pi over 2 and is the same thing as if I took that and subtracted 2 pi from it, right? Using the property we just had on the previous page, I can add or subtract a multiple of 2 pi. And so I do that here and I get, why do I do that? Well, I have an ulterior motive with Euler's identity because look at what happens here. If I take 3 pi over 2 and subtract 2 pi, I get minus pi over 2. And now I'm saying, oh, now I've got two terms like this. So I'm going to put all this in for here. Let me write this on a, a fresh line. So I end up with 2 times e to the j pi over 2n plus 2 times e to the minus j pi over 2 times n. should have broken this out into a separate, separate place. Oh, I wonder if I'm careful and clever enough if I can make that work. I doubt it, but let's see. If I go select all this, can I sort of move it up here out of my way? Well, I can for now just to get it out of my way because I don't want people being confused here. So, right, so this is my equation. And now I'm looking really, uh, really lined up to use that Euler's identity. So that makes, you can hear the excitement in my voice about that. Um, Right, so I'm going to factor the 2 out front just to really take this step by step. As time goes on, we get more expert. We'll sort of become more expert and fluent with these types of equations. We'll, we'll do more steps at once. But now we say I've got an e to the j pi over 2 and an e to the minus j pi over 2. I'm adding them together so the thing inside the brackets will be 2 times a cosine of 
pi over 2 times n. Right? So this is, uh, when, I, when I write that all out, I have 4 times the cosine of pi over 2 n. So this is my time signal. And, and one of the first things I should check is say, well, if I did this right, it should be periodic every 4. And so if I look at, let's, let's plug in values of this. So x of n is, is equal to that. So if I set n equal to 0, I get cos of 0, which is 1, times 4. So this is equal to 4 at n equals 0. When n equals 1, I have cosine of pi over 2. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this is 0 when n equals 1. When n equals 2, I have cosine of pi, which is a minus 1. And so that 4 amplitude out front makes it 4, minus 4. Then when n equals 3, I have 3 pi over 2. And that is also, if, if you know your sort of common angles in trig, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is also 0. And then if I got back to n equals 4 again, I'd have cosine of 2 pi, which is back to being 1 and 4. So again, that, that, that's a good sanity check that I didn't make a dumb algebra error somewhere, that I, my signal is repeating every 4, which was the period I started with way up here at the top of the page, right? So the signal should be periodic every 4. And so this is, uh, you know, but it's important to emphasize this is, this was the plot of the coefficients is different. This is why it's important to keep things clearly labeled. If I plot my, my time signal here, I'd have a, a oh. Now I'm plotting this. This axis is my n axis. I have x of n. Right, I have 4 at time 0, 1 at time 1 minus 4 at time 2, and 0 at time 3. And then it goes on repeating. And it also, we know periodic signals are periodic forever in both directions. So I'd also have something that looks like that. So that's how I plug through step by step. I get the answer for one period, and then I can just repeat it over and over again because I know it is a periodic signal. And this one worked out pretty to have a nice compact form that is 4 times cosine pi over 2n. Right? So, so there's really almost like a, an imaginary, not an imaginary, a, an invisible cosine right, connecting these dots with period 4 you want to want to think of it that way to make it clear why this is still a cosine even that just sort of low, like it jumps up then it's zero then it goes down and then it's zero and jumps up and so on so there's a good you know really breaking it down step by step example of uh, the Fourier synthesis equation I've also got a similar one I'll do with the analysis equation with a slightly different signal uh, so you can see how it looks when I go in the other direction if I if I get the time signal how do I find the a sub k's okay so that's all for this time I'll see you at the next video